Can you see it? Yes, perfect. Okay, great. So as we all know, the internet has seen a very rapid development in the last years, which led to a very rapid development of social, of social media. This in turn led to a growing interest for most people to spend their time online. This comes with advantages, but also disadvantages and even risks. One of these risks is the fact that our personal information has become a very valuable sellable good. So our personal data is being traded for uh, targeting ads, for increasing a company's revenue, and even to change our political views, which is very dangerous in my opinion. Uh, health information is also a very da dangerous asset that is tradable online. This is a protected asset that obviously should be kept as private as we want to keep it, but it can lead to third parties. Uh, there are health applications, especially mental health applications, um, that sometimes fail to keep the data as uh, private as we would like. So with uh, also the, the, the GDPR being introduced in 2018, uh, this has become a problem, the problem of protecting our uh, personal data. The process of user authentication is um, the process of determining a user's identity, as we all know. This is split into three categories. It's knowledge-based, so the user has to know something like a PIN, a password, or something like that. Token-based, which means that you receive some sort of token that gives you a password and biometric based, which means uh, like face identification or even fingerprint, things like that on your body. Virtual reality or VR uh, has seen great potential in therapy, both physical and emotional in many disorders, mental disorders, even eating disorders. However, it is usually used for gaming, which obviously requires a lower level of security. But since, uh, even in this, these difficult times with COVID, um, VR can be used in, for example, for virtual presence at conferences. It can be used to access private resources or for medical applications, and this requires a very high uh, level of security. Uh, utilizing the user's data can be ethical if the user gives consent, but uh, issues occur when the user doesn't exactly know what they, are be what they give their consent for. So for example, artificial emotional intelligence like Amazon's Alexa can infer emotion from the, our voice, our social behaviors, and the user might not be aware of this when they give their consent. Uh, it, these, this information can be used for humane purposes, for example, to improve the user's mood with jokes and music. However, it can be used for negative purposes, for controlling purchasing habits, or as I said, for changing political views. So, um, we can use uh, users' data for research if it is anonymized, which is very different from using pseudonyms. So anonymized data means that there are no IDs or no, there's no information that can be used to trace back to the user. It is completely anonymous. So we can also use the, the data if the user gives consent, but this consent should not be seen as a one-time event, which is click on a button and agree. It, it should be used as an ongoing process. So I am actively giving consent for my data to be used, but if I decide at some point to not no longer give consent, then I can remove all of the data from uh, someone's storage or from a server. So uh, my uh, presentation, as I said, is focused on authentication and data protection in virtual reality. As background work or related work, I found these two articles that I found interesting. Uh, this VR authentication is not a very popular subject, so there are a lot of articles on this, uh, on this subject, but these two I found to be interesting. In 2016, uh, an article compared three methods of virtual reality authentication to a PIN, to a password, or to a, th a 3D password. And these methods all passed through two experiments with 15 participants. The first, first experiment wanted to record the error rate of introducing a password. So the, the user first had to cho choose a password, then insert the password five times, and uh, the, the system will record the error rate. And this uh, proves that the PIN is the easiest, the most user-friendly, but and the 3D password is the least user-friendly. The second experiment uh, wanted to study shoulder, shoulder surfing. So how safe authentication is from people who are watching you authenticate. So they 
uh, created videos of these users authenticating, showed these videos to the other users, and then prompted them to try to authenticate in some other user's place. This also uh, showed that the 3D, the 3D password is the safest, while, as I said, it is the least user-friendly. In 2017, another interesting application was for lip reading uh, authentication. So the system would take a sequence of images of the user, then they would crop the images around the user's mouth and feed the, these images into a long short term memory architecture and uh, analyze these images in order to authenticate the user. So for my methodology, I will first talk about uh, keeping the data safe on the server side. So uh, as far as database security is concerned, I use pseudonyms for uh, table names and table fields because even, even if someone somehow manages to get the data from the database, I want it to be as difficult as possible for uh, someone else to understand that data. So I replace these names with pseudonyms. The information in the database is encrypted uh, using the Fermat algorithm. And this, uh, this algorithm requires a password. The password is computed at runtime using the user's information. It is not stored anywhere and uh, the process of computing it is not uh, written anywhere. So it is as safe as I uh, could get it to be. <laughs> Um, uh, this uh, system requires minimal data, so it only stores records of the user's dense moves, which I will explain later. Uh, it doesn't store any other information about the user, so as I said, it is minimal. Uh, the data is stored on the server side in encrypted files with the same algorithm, and the, paid, the, the path to the data is computed at runtime, so, and it is also not stored anywhere. Uh, as a methodology for the, the VR authentication, I used three versions. First, I wanted to use uh, like a username that is a recording of the user's voice and the password in the a dynamic movement. So the user moves in a specific way. This uh, version failed because the voice analysis proved to be very difficult. And then the second version uh, only used the uh, user's dynamic movement. So each user had their own uh, intelligent model that would know if uh, a dance move is a user or is another user. And this, this had an accuracy, a very high accuracy, but in practice, it did not perform well, meaning that it, uh, for new information that it hadn't seen before, it would just log random people in and not actually uh, log the person that is trying to authenticate. The third version and the one that I am currently working on uh, uses a text for username. So exactly the way we are used to authenticating in regular applications and this uh, dynamic movement as the password. This also has a high accuracy and is it proved to be a bit inconsistent in practice. I will talk about this later as well. So for the dynamic movement itself, at first I chose to uh, take the positions and the rotations of the headset and uh, the left and the right controllers at every half a second. And uh, then I chose to just ditch the rotations completely and only use the positions. So if the, the user is facing the laptop or facing some other way, this wouldn't influence the, the algorithm. The records are stored in JSON files as you can see in the images on the right. Uh, then these, um, this information is sent to the, the server. Uh, for the registration purposes, the, the user is supposed to repeat the same movement multiple times. I chose four times. Uh, and then these four records are sent to the server. I create augmented data by moving the positions on the X and the Z axis to obtain uh, much more information that I can use to train the, the uh, intelligent models. Then the data is normalized uh, on, on X and Z between minus 100 and 100 and on the Y axis between zero and three. The area is flattened, which you can see in the image on the right. And then it is spread to the right to obtain an area of length 300. The, uh, all of the user models are this, have the same architecture. It is a simple artificial neural network a uh, regression model because it only has one neuron on the output layer, which is either one for true, so the user that's trying to authenticate is the correct user, and zero for false. 
uh, then it has uh, two hidden layers, a dropout layer, another hidden layer, another dropout layer, and finally the output. I used ReLU activation for on all of the hidden layers and sigmoid activation on the output to restrict the output to the zero one interval. This was compiled with the atom optimizer with the uh, 10 to the power minus six uh, learning rate because with the usual, the default learning rate, it would just, the, the loss would drop too quickly. And I chose to, to lower this learning rate a little bit. The data is split into 80% for training, 20% for testing, and out of the 80% uh, for training, 25% is used for validation. And it was also trained, each model was trained for 150 epochs. So the full flow is uh, the following. The server receives the data. It checks if the username, the text it received, uh, already exists in the database. If it does, it returns an error. If it doesn't, then it creates a new, data, a new user in the database. Then it saves the registration files into uh, encrypted files on the server. It creates augmented files, then flattens these arrays, uh, parses all of the data of, for all of the users on the server, and marks the new user's data with one and all of the other user's data with zero. Then the, this data is shuffled. And out of the ones that are uh, marked with zero, we select the number that is equal to the one that are labeled with one. Because obviously, when a new user registers, the the number of other users is going to be larger than one. So we need to balance this data set by selecting a certain number of zero labeled records. These are chosen randomly, as I said, because the data is shuffled previously. Then this data is split into training and testing. The new user's model is trained. And uh, then all of the other users' uh, models are retrained using the new user's, user's data as well. Uh, the server was created in Python using the class technology. It only has two inputs for login and register, uh, which receive the username and uh, either a dance record, a JSON dance record, or uh, an array of JSON dance records, and return different messages on success and failure. Uh, I will now show you a small demonstration of what the, the virtual reality world looks like. So as you can see, I tried to create a very uh, relaxing world. I don't know if you could hear the, the sound, but it plays of birds chirping. It has flowers and trees, and it's just a relaxing environment, in my opinion. Uh, you can see here, there's a, a keyboard, a virtual keyboard. And when you touch the keys with the, the controllers, you can write on the screen, the screen that is right here, the purple screen. And then there is a table to the right with two buttons, a login and a register button. So the flow on the, the front end part is performed using states, like a state machine flow. To type the username, as I said, we have to touch the, the keys on the, the keyboard. To record the dance move, the user has to hold the grip button, the one that is uh, shown in the picture on the right. When the user releases the grip button, the flow moves on to the ne next state in the state sequence. Uh, if the state sequence is of a register type, then the user has to repeat the movement four times. And after repeating it the fourth time, the information is sent to the server. If the, the sequence is of a login type, then the information is sent to the server after just one uh, dynamic movement. So here you can see the way I use it to register. So first I pressed on the button. I have here some uh, messages that the uh, system is writing. Then as you can see in the, the square in the top left corner, I have performed the same movement four times. I chose to turn 90 degrees to the right after each movement so that, uh, as I said, rotation would not uh, affect the metrics of my, my system. So for experimental evaluation, I obtained for all of the users, uh, which went up to four, four I, I say users, but I was the only user to actually use it with four different um, dynamic movements. I wasn't able to get someone else to use it yet. 
but for all of the users, the loss was around 0 0.02 and the accuracy was around 0 0.99. As you can see in the picture on the right with a learning rate uh, of 10 to the power minus six, it learned a lot slower, but it, it still reached an accuracy of 0 0.99. However, when this is used in practice, uh, it seems to not log anyone in. I'm not exactly sure why yet, uh, this could happen for multiple reasons. Most likely I have a bug in the code, which I will debug later. Uh, the model could be overfitted, but this seems unlikely because I used uh, augmented data. And as you saw, I rotated to the right so that the rotation wouldn't affect it. It just doesn't seem to me very plausible that the model is overfitted. However, I will try cross-validation and another way of obtaining aug augmented data. Uh, another uh, reason would be that the data is too specific. So it actually takes into consideration rotation or other things that might affect these uh, dispositions that we have. And uh, this uh, solution for this is also to try to uh, create better augmented data. So for future work um, for this particular system, as I said, I will debug it, try cross validation and other uh, data augmentation, I will try to create more users. I want to display instructions on screen and I want to have a full full virtual keyboard uh, for the, the username. Uh, this system, I want it, I want to use it in a VR exposure therapy application for emetophobia, which is, uh, is something that I'm very passionate about and I really hope to present to you in the future. And this has been my presentation. Thank you for your attention.